I started playing like at 14. Mm-hmm. And that was why I was still playing football. So I was playing football. And uh, I remember one time getting injured uh, playing my sophomore year of high school. And um, I got my, my left wrist was injured. I was so glad because my old choir director used to fuss at me for not playing chords in my left hand. Because <laughs> I was literally like, I was one year into it. I was, I was having fun kind of trying to play runs in my right hand, but wow. it didn't have that action yet. You know, wow. yeah. So when yeah. my wrist went out, yeah. I was so happy because I was like, "Now I can really just use say I, I, I had the brace on. I'm like this. Now I can do whatever I want to do, and ain't nobody gonna fuss with me today." <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on. because my wrist is messed up. Hello, everybody. How you doing? Welcome to Behind the Music with Q. And I have my co-host, uh, Antoine Chambers. Yep. And we have such a wonderful guest today, uh, my brother and my friend of uh, many years now, Roy Cotton. So we're honored to have him. Uh, this podcast, this is a podcast where we discuss what happens behind the music, uh, the process to making music, the challenges of life. Uh, life, family, encouragement, uh, giving and sharing wisdom with you and hoping to uh, impart something, leave something, add value, significance to your life. So we're talking with great brothers, great sisters, musicians, preachers, producers, just amazing people. Uh, As I always say, my mission statement in life is challenging, changing, and charging one life at a time. I also speak of... um, the Lord, what he gave me, my slogan, love is my inspiration and love is my motivation, why I do what I do. So I thought about it and we're going to jump right on in because I believe today is going to be an awesome podcast and uh, you're really going to be able to take away something, glean something, receive something that's going to help you today, right now at this moment. Um, so I thought about a, a thought for the day and um, it's very, very simple. A lot of times, people, uh, they will literally disregard the blessing because of the package it came in. And so I I thought about that and I wanted to share that. Be careful uh, that you, that you, what you've prayed for, what you're aspiring, what you're looking for, uh, what you're seeking for, um, the things that you're waiting for, it might not come in the package that you think. It might not come the way you want it to be wrapped. It might not even come through the individual you think it should. It might not come in the circle that you're in. And so don't disregard the package, uh, the blessing that God is sending your way because of the package. I heard a a statement that Memento say last week. He said, um, God puts his greatest treasures in the most flawed vessels. And so if you're looking for treasure, Sometimes it's going to come through flawed people. They might be mean. They might be whatever. They might talk a certain way. But if they have a grace on their life, if they have favor on their life, if they're gatekeepers, you got to make sure that you have honor. You got to make sure that you have respect. You got to make sure you can see and understand where you are, what door you're in, what setting you're in, what moment there is. Don't miss the moment today. So don't disregard the blessing because of the package. So we have a great guest today. And I'm uh, so glad to have him. Uh, we were talking before we started and uh, going back to when I first met him. Uh, and if today you look at him, uh, he has short hair, but I met him when he had locks and he was blazing the keyboard, blazing the keyboard. But uh, I've watched him just continue to grow. I've watched him. He's a conductor. Uh, he's a husband. He's a father. He's a great man of God. He knows the word of God. He can sing, he can produce, he can play. Some of your top people in gospel today. Uh, Kiara shared, I believe, was the record that he just did. Uh, many others. So if you're looking for an arranger, a singer, a teacher, he knows the history of him. He can come in. Uh, he has records. 
Carter. Man, Q. Behind the music with Q. That's a lot. <laughs> I don't know if I'm all of that, but hey, I try to be. I try to be a conductor. I try to be a. Oh uh, no. I try to be a singer. He's he's awesome. So Roy, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Introduce yourself to the people today, to the listeners, to the viewers who will hear this, and um, we'll get on in, man. Yes, sir. Well, I'm uh, originally from Richmond, Virginia. Grew up in Richmond on the East Coast. Um, if anybody knows the thing about Richmond, it's kind of like a, mm-hmm. a small DC. It's kind of like the same culture. It's kind of wow. like DC, but it's still considered the South. Uh, my dad is a musician, preacher. He actually grew up in Dallas. Uh, mm-hmm. but moved to Virginia uh, to take a job. And that's where he met my mother, who's from Norfolk, Virginia. Um, so they both actually met at the school where I graduated from, uh, Hampton University in Virginia, um, mm-hmm. where they met. And they had two sons. So me and my brother grew up together, always in music. Uh, he actually got music before I did, my little brother. Mm-hmm. And he was, a you know, kind of a prodigy playing classical piano. So he's three years younger than me. When I saw all the attention he was getting playing the piano and all the girls and the younger girls, you know, hold on. <laughs> this boy get too much attention. <laughs> oh, yeah, I started playing, but I started late. I started, I started playing like at 14. Mm-hmm. And that was why I was still playing football. So I was playing football. And uh, I remember one time getting injured, uh, playing my sophomore year of high school. And um, I got my, my left wrist was injured. I was so glad because my old choir director used to fuss at me for not playing chords in my left hand. Because <laughs> I was literally like, I was one year into it. I was, I was having fun kind of trying to play runs in my right hand, but wow. didn't have that action yet, you know? Wow. Yeah. So when yeah. my wrist went out, yeah. I was so happy, because I was like, now I can really just use them. Say, I, I had the brace on, I'm like this. Now I can do whatever I want to do, and ain't nobody <laughs> gonna fuss with me. <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on. Because my wrist is messed up. Wow. Well. So, uh, <laughs> so I, you know, I, I grew up, um, um, basically, I was always just around music, so I really kind of played before I started playing. Maybe some musicians understand it, like if you don't have, I know some guys who have not had an instrument in their house, but they just heard stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to do a thing where I would, at, at nighttime, I put on a record, and I would just mimic what I saw my dad doing on the organ. Mm-hmm. We didn't have an organ in the house, so I'd be sitting there. I played I played a record on my um uh what did you call it? Uh Walkman. Walkman. What was it called? Walkman. Walkman. On my Walkman. Uh-huh. I put the tape in, I put I put in a Hezekiah Walker record. Come and on. I and I and I'd be doing this. I'd be switching. I didn't know what that thing was. And I'd be acting like I was moving draw ball. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I just knew every time they playing that thing, they always switch it. always doing something. It's always something else, you know. So I was I was infatuated with the organ, um, and finally started playing. I think when I got, by the time I was a senior in high school, I actually stopped playing football, and I literally practiced like six hours a day. I would I would come home because you know when you're a late bloomer, you feel like you're an underdog in music. So true. All of my buddies who were playing had been playing since they were like three. So I'm like. Yeah. Ooh, y'all got an eleven year run on me. Mm. I'm never gonna catch up. But that, but that pushed me. So, um, you know, I, I practiced like a lunatic. I was a lunatic for practicing. Mm. Um, but I always, uh, you know, always had um, a passion for it, even though I had done it before. Because I, because you know, fathers got to know that your sons are watching everything you do. True. Um, True. And, and even if you know, they they don't act like they're paying attention to what you're doing. They are. They always are watching. So um, 
So of course I went, actually moved to Texas when I was a, oh, 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 oh. I need to lock that door. I, I need to lock that door. <laughs> you She's so cute. Don't drop mom's computer. This is my life. That is so hey, cute. You, you just said the children are always watching. They they yeah, so. always watch. <laughs> That's fine. That's so authentic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh moved to Texas and um, you know, really kind of went farther into music. Um, I actually started a gospel choir at my high school at Cedar Hill High School. Um and then after I graduated, went back to Virginia, went to Hampton University. My dad always told me because I didn't like reading. I didn't like mm -hmm. reading music. I did not like it. Mm -hmm. My dad knew how to get through to me one day, though. He said, listen, he said, you keep playing all these all these gospel songs. So that's good. He said, I can do that, too. He said, but if, if you never want to go broke, learn how to read music, too. Mm -hmm. That's good. Said, he knew that that would get to me. If you never want to go broke, nobody wants to go broke. <laughs> oh, man. Nobody. So, nobody, bro. Went to college, went to uh, school for music engineering technology. I figured I would have a couple years of having to do piano, but that wasn't the case. Our program mm. really hadn't been thought through yet. So mm. we had a whole lot of music. We pretty much had the same level of music training that um, music education majors had. Mm. It's just like they just took the educational classes you were taking music education and switched those out for some, stu some studio classes and electrical engineering. Like I have a minor in electrical engineering. I'm like, uh -huh. supposedly like, I'm like four credits short of having a minor in electrical engineering because they hadn't figured out how to put the degree together. Wow. I know okay. stuff that I don't ever need to know. And I, <laughs> and I got the day I walked out the, matter of fact, well, I have a funny story, but I probably shouldn't tell it on this platform. Um, but now let the I, Lord use you, bro. Just behind the behind the music, brother. Come on. Well, this is this is okay. This is about the corruption of education. Come on, corruption. Come on, corruption. So I took so my first class I took for my electrical engineering minor, which makes no sense if I'm going to school for studio production. Mm -hmm. Um, so we had a class called civil engineering. You know, civil engineering is you know, the engineers who build the roads, who figure out, you know, what the zoning should be in a city. Civil engineers pretty much work the infrastructure of a city, of a state, mm -hmm. of everything. Highways, they work out everything. Where the rails should be, you know, how, how long the median should be, depending on whatever. So anyway, took this civil engineering class and we had to do a simulation we had to do a sim, a sim, kind of like a Sim City. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember the game Sim City? Mm -hmm. it like it's, a, it, it's like a simulation thing that's actually studied in schools. So we had to really like civilly engineer a, a, an entire city, and it took us uh, a month and a half to build it. We were all in groups of four in the class. So anyway, we stressed out trying to build this city. You know how many how many fire departments are needed per per a uh, block? You know, oh, you need another fire department. Oh, so anyway, the night before we had to turn in that final project, the girls' computer who we were using crashed. Oh. Now I was already to see. I can't afford. <laughs> I cannot afford a zero on this project. I'm going to have to take this class again. Yeah. So we went to class the next day. And one of the girls in the group was just crying. She was just flat out crying. Oh, my God. So I can't believe it. Computer crash. And I, I, and I was real cool with teacher. I was like, hey, teach. Professor, man, I, we're in trouble, man. You know, I, I, I can't afford no zero, but we about to go back home because it was, it was Christmas break. Mm -hmm. So lo and behold, I come to find out I got to be in the class. <laughs> Hold on. 
That don't make no mathematical sense. Now, understand how you give any, anybody's names. If you know this story, too bad for you. It's just between me and you at this point, because nobody else knows your name. <laughs> so literally a year later, I run into one of the girls, because you know she wasn't a music major. And after your first year, you know, you kind of get more into what your actual, like, I didn't have any more classes with this girl. I run to her like in the cafeteria. I was like, hey, how in the world did we pass that class last year? She tells me, well, such and such slept with the professor. That's how we got through it. I said, oh. I said, oh. oh. Behind the education. He turned that. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Listen. But listen, he turned wow. it out of sin. But oh. God can use your sin and work it out for your good. No. <laughs> that's not a lesson at all. Lord, Lord. That's not, that's not yeah. politically correct. But oh all I'm God. saying is, I did not know for a year how I made it out that class. Wow. This is the corruption of the school system, of, of professors messing with these, especially in Still, college, yeah. or yeah. bad college. Mm. But anyway. No, that's, that's real. That's, that's real, bro. Wow, incredible. But, but but here we go again. You know, anytime God is going to bless anybody, he's going to use a man. So you could have favor with God, but God is still going to bring that favor to you to produce it here on earth through a man. It goes back again, I think, to don't disregard the blessing because of the package. You don't know how it's going to come. Mm -hmm. You just said that. I just said that. That is that is, oh, that is serious. I know you to be a prophet. I know you I know Cornell Gaskins to be a prophet. I'll never doubt you again. I'll never, you set me up and I didn't even see it. Bro, I'm trying to tell you. So, you know. Don't disregard that's, that's the lesson because, because of the package, package you came in. You just said that. Yep. And my host, I don't know why I turned this corner. I don't know why I had to tell this story, but because God said you have to make sense of why Cornell said that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bro, I no, mean. That's the word. You said the Lord, you had it on your heart? He had it on my heart. Don't know why I said that one out of all the ones I got. That, that was the one that came to my spirit. But it's amazing to see, bro, that even in the midst of, uh, as I'm listening to your story and how you know, matriculated through music and these uh, the various different places that the Lord is taking you to. It's amazing to see how the Lord is not going to let someone else's mistakes or somebody else's mishap or the people that you might be connected to in a season of your life stop what he went where he wants you to go. He's right. still going to bring you through the place where he ultimately wants you to be. You know what I? You know what I, I'm, I'm blessed by by your life, bro. And I want you to share some things of of uh, your your. I definitely want to get your perspective on Hampton University, because I I don't know if people really know what Hampton University is, and know how it's really um, a very historic university, especially when it comes to pastors and churches. A lot of Baptist churches. To, mm -hmm. You know, I want you to. Ex, you know, get into some of that and express some of that. But, bro, I'm a, I'm amazed uh, to see, as you were telling your story, feeling like a late bloomer because there might be some other people right now who are or know somebody who is that might need to share something encouraging at this moment. It's funny how the stuff that you go through that you feel that you have not gotten is still in God's plan to unlock to activate something in you to get you to be where exactly where you are supposed to be mm -hmm. so to be honest um god is the most patient that we're ever going to see and we're ever going to experience you know uh know of and i think he's trying to teach us how to be more patient patient number one with ourselves because it's a process right i started playing i felt like i was a late bloomer too so i know that I know that sentiment. How were you when you started? I was like 12. Wow. And so most people think I'm classically trained, but I'm not. I have never sat with a classical teacher that took me through 
you know, the scales, the proper posture, none of that. I just have been literally blessed with a technique. And see, you said I practice six hours a day. Well, I've never practiced six hours a day in my life. I think the most I've ever sat down. I was playing, and half of that was playing shout music. <laughs> right. right. So I that's said, the best teacher. That is the best teacher. Man, at, one, one, at 150 BPM plus? Yes. And that's before I knew. When what, I was on in, that's, that's be, actually practice. That's serious practice. That's before I knew what 150 was because they were shot at 160 in New York. Yeah. 165, yeah. Oh, easy. Yeah, yeah, that's in Brooklyn. Oh, you my know, oh, oh my gosh, bro. Oh my God. And, but I'm amazed to see how, I, as when I look back over my life, and maybe you have done the same thing, I say where I think I should have been by now or where I should have been 10 years ago. If I would have did this and I would have got this, well, you will not know the accurate record, Roy, myself, Antoine, of the people that your life has touched along your journey, along your process. Mm -hmm. And God knew where you needed to be, how you needed to be there. If you were there any sooner, people would have missed some plant, some water, but God give it the increase. You planted so many great seeds, man even in your thoughts as a late bloomer. And so um, I know you know this, but man, you have great significance in this world. And I believe God has given you things that's going to um, continue to cause you to trailblaze and to blaze a path, man, and others will tap into the potential that's in them to begin to blaze as well. So I appreciate you, bro, and I appreciate you sharing, man. Please, man, get into some of uh, your experience or some of your thoughts about um, church, church structure, um, what you learned at Hampton, you know, how all of that incorporates, because you've met so many leaders, bro. Um, you've worked with so many, helping them to, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, consulting them on the type of musicians, the type of instrument of music that's needed. Man, tell the people about, share with us some of that, man. Yeah, well, um, so I'm sniffing. Are you good, um, bro? So, yeah, I went to Hampton, and Hampton University has a conference every year. So Hampton is a private university. It's not a Christian university, but it's private. Mm, okay. um, so every year, one of their kind of big events is called the Hampton Ministers Conference. Those not a Christian conference, they do have, those not a Christian university, they have a Christian conference. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's always the first full week in June. Of course, this is the first year they haven't had it in 108 years, I think, because of COVID-19. So, so basically, I started playing there, I think it was like 2003, when I was a sophomore in college. Um, started just playing piano for, for, for praise and worship. Um, organist for the conference in 2005 and then went on to uh, lead a, um, they do a clinic every night, a musician's clinic that I, I spearheaded started in 2009. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so this would have been our um, 11th year of doing it. Mm -hmm. um, it also um, do kind of keyboard orchestration for the, for the services and concerts because everything is really orchestrated. We do have a, we have a horn section, mm -hmm. but you know how it is like with string players, you really can't get strings on stage um, mm -hmm. or, or get a good miking, you know, presence uh, of strings. So we've always done the keyboard strings. Anyway, with that conference, I got a lot of exposure to a lot of leaders because they have over 10,000 pastors who come to that conference. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when I graduated from college, I got a lot of job offers just by being a part of that conference. Mm -hmm. Now, anybody who's on that stage is pretty much, you know, they're, they're tried and true because the whole, everybody in that room has seen you go through the fire. And mm -hmm. I went through the fire a couple of times. I got mm -hmm. some stories about folding. I did. I have, I have folded. Because you, you get stuff thrown at you 
from every direction. And if you're not ready, <clears throat> like I had to, my first, my first year of playing, I had to sight read a song. Oh, wow. Because the other, let me say, okay, let me be careful. Basically, the other organist was having trouble getting up on the organ bench. What? Because you have to climb up this platform to get up to the organ. The organs are elevated. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. they didn't have the stairs to get up on the organ. Oh, platform. no. And this particular gentleman, yeah, he was pretty large. So he could not get up the bench. I had to get up there. But he said, I can't, I can't get up there. So I had to get up there and sight read a song that I didn't know. And the, the problem was, it wasn't like you could just kind of swell in there. The song started off with just organ by itself. Oh, man. The sight reading in front of 10,000 people and I never played the song before. Oh, no. Nor was I paying attention when he was playing it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, I've, got, I've gone through the fire. I've Come gone on. through the flood. Come on. Come on. So, yeah. Wow. So, basically, that was a good little folder moment. It, it hurt. But you know mm. what? Some. If we're broke when that shop music, that's how I'm gonna do it. I'm giving every run I know because I y'all gonna still know I can play. Yeah, you gonna still know I can play. I might not play this song, but I can still play. Come, come on, bro. Oh man, when it got play runs, no play runs, no, not but uh, incredible, yeah, man. You know, but I went through the fire that year and got some job offers. You know, my, my dad's a pastor, so. A lot of his buddies were seeing I was graduating from college. And I got to a point, I said, you know what? I can't work for everybody. Mm. <coughs> Bless you, bro. I Bless can't you. take mm. five different jobs. And the one job I was going to actually take in Northern Virginia, that was the mm. highest paid job. Okay. My mother, was like, my mother said, you need to pray about that one. I said, no, I ain't got to pray about this. I said, I'll get in there. I'll let the Lord figure out what's... I'll pray after I get in there. Yeah, and you know what? Check this is how the Lord fix. See, the Lord knows how to fix you. You think you fixing him? He fixing you the whole time. Yeah, come on. So I went to New Mexico. Went to a conference in New Mexico. Actually, a guy who went to the Hampton Conference was at that this conference in New Mexico, in Albuquerque. And he says, "Sir, man, what you doing, man?" I said, "Well, you know, I'm back home, but..." I've been looking at a few job offers. Actually, there's one I'm probably going to take in uh, in Northern Virginia. He said, you know, he said, I used to be in, you know, I used to live in Northern, Northern Virginia. We're in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. He said, I used to be in Northern Virginia. I didn't know that I, because he at this point, he was in um, somewhere like Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. So he tells me, asked me, what's the name of the church? I told him the name. Now, I don't know where your listeners are with this, but I'm just tell you my side of it. <laughs> they, had a, they have a lesbian choir at the church. I said, oh, oh. He said, man, did, have you looked that church oh. up? I said, man, I ain't look up nothing. When they said they're about to pay me $85,000 fresh out of college, I'm going to take that job. I'm taking the money and run and figure it out later. He said, man. <laughs> He said, oh, he said, look up their website. He gave me the website. I looked it up. I said, jeez. Oh, my goodness. See, you don't chase money. You don't chase Come money. The, mo on. the moment you chase money, you, 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 you chase your, you're chasing your tail. That's good, you man. Fix, you're going to need God to clean it up anyway, so you might as well go to him from jump, like my mother was saying. Pray yeah. now. Yeah. But anyway, what I started doing after that, I really got trigger shy of taking a church job. But I kept telling guys, man, I'll let you know if I hear something. One pastor mm -hmm. brought, pulled me to the carpet one day. He said, listen, you told me you were going to hit up somebody. You haven't told me anything. I said, ooh. He was like, you know, he was like, be a man of your word. 
She said, okay. Mm. I looked up, talked to some people. I sent a guy over to a ch- to, to his church. Mm-hmm. It worked out. <laughs> then another church, I, <clears throat> they wanted me to play for them. I said, no, I'm going to play for my dad. I actually decided to play for my dad's church. Go back mm-hmm. to my dad. So basically, I started sending people to churches, and then finally, some said, I could probably get paid to do this. Because I'm going to get a lot of money in my dad's church. I said, but ma- ma- just maybe. This is a oh, wow. This is a job. So what wow. I did, I put together a whole process. And the first church, they called me once I had that brain, that, that light bulb go off. I said, yeah, man, so, so this is what we do. And I started talking like I had a business. He said, uh, so how much do you charge? And when I tell you, I, that's the only part I had not thought about. Mm. So I had to figure it out on the spot. I said, I said, so tell me, what's the, um, what, how much is this position going to pay? He said, you know, it's going to pay $600 a week. So tell you what, it'll, it'll take me about a month to do it. So, so you'll basically pay me for two weeks of what that person will be getting paid. 1200 And he said, cool, let's do it. Like, I just made $1,200? What? Mm. Uh, uh. Wait, a 21-year-old guy making $1,200 out of nowhere? I said, oh, let's do this. Mm. I started working. I, you know, I, basically, it was all referral-based. <clears throat> Pastors would mm. tell them, hey, man, I know a guy who can help you get musicians at your church. And that's kind of where it went. The problem was never equal. It was it was always too many churches and not enough musicians, or too many musicians and not enough churches. I never was able to get those two worlds to meet. It was mm. that's why it would take a long time. Sometimes, you know, I would have a lot of musicians looking for jobs, and I'd be like, "Hey, man, I only got four churches right now, and mm. they're not going to hire you. They're not going to hire you. They're not going to hire you." Now, one wow. thing there, um. Growing up in kind of a Baptist environment and Kojic environment, mm-hmm. and going to school Catholic, God had me in, the, in these circles where I could see different denominations of how they move. Mm-hmm. So I was able to kind of shift and talk to a to talk to a pastor of a little small fifty member church, and then talk to a bishop, five hundred members and talk their language to them. Mm-hmm. So that I already was thinking like them before I sent somebody their way. The only people I would send to that church was the person who I felt like was going to be the right fit. Right. You have to know the music. Because if you were like a Baptist guy and you ain't never flowed in a Koji service, you're going to have a problem. Yes. Yes. So Absolutely. They, when they start singing high place, you, you're, gonna, you're not going to know what chords to play. Right, right. You know, so right, like, right. like now Cotton sent me this guy, he don't know how to play high place, you know what I'm saying? Right. So so that's why I had to, you know, I think me having a background of, of different denominations, like basically my my dad's my dad's father's side is Church of Christ. My dad's mother's side mm-hmm. is coach. Oh, my wow. family is high church Baptist. I'm talking about mm-hmm, mm-hmm. pipe organ all day. Wow. So, I came up just seeing all this stuff at one time. Now, the church I was at um, in Richmond was a Baptist church. Yeah. They were real Baptist. They were tongues. They were Baptist. Come on, brother. Yeah. We, know, we know even what to call them back then. Wow. So, you know, it was always. It was just kind of, it, it was great, very enlightening being in those different circles because it helped for me to be able to do the staffing because you got to really mm-hmm. think like a preacher. You got to think, mm-hmm. if this person is an NBA, you know, somebody who's run a business before, then you can't send them somebody who's always not on time, like who's always late. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a problem. So that might be the first thing you think about. I need to call somebody who I know is on time. Wow. You check their references. That's the references. Is this person on time? And what I would typically do was I would tell that church, 
I'm going to get you, every church, I would give them three applicants. <clears throat> That's a golden number. Three is the golden number. Two is not enough. Mm. Two is binary. Two says it's either him or him. We like him better or we like him better. Three is just one extra person says, who's the best person for the church? It mm. changes the question. Two people is, is he better than him or is she better than him? Or is she better than her? Three is, which one of these three are the best fit for our ministry? Wow. When you start getting to four, then it just starts getting crazy. You know, and, and for some churches, depending on the size of the church and salary offering, there they could even be 12 applicants, but I would always narrow those 12 down to three. So. That's amazing. Well, you know, I'm not trying to be, uh, it's going to sound maybe a little deep, but I'm not trying to be deep. What I think is interesting is I believe that uh, one of my, I love to say this because I got so many different mentors. Something that I've learned is someone is always watching you who's greatly capable of blessing you. But the thing is, do you qualify? And so people don't like, people don't like to pre-qualify and they don't like the qualifications for the new thing or the next thing that they want in their life. So I just wanted to take this moment because of what you said, because I think it's so important. There is somebody right now, my brother and my sister, uh, there's somebody watching us. We're literally going through a process of, uh, what's the word? Uh, somebody's watching us. We're almost doing like a type of interview for the next season of our life. Uh, there's some people been asking some questions about, you know, COVID-19, various different things were going on in the world. What do I do next? And I thought it was amazing as you were saying, mm -hmm. hey, you know, I'm looking for a church, but in the midst of the various different things, here go God. Man, Roy Cotton, you guys, is an awesome orchestrator. Man, he's on my new record that's coming out. Y'all got to check him out. Y'all got to check this record out. It's going to be amazing. And I'm looking at how God orchestrated your life, Roy. You're telling your mom, I'm not going to pray. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm going to get in this, and I'm going to run with this money, and then we're going to figure this out later. But God was orchestrating your steps because he did not want you to get locked in to something because being locked into something wasn't going to birth an idea that would birth another idea that right. would birth another idea. And yeah. I'm looking now at, I'm looking at your life, man, and the fruit. See, all fruit is not good fruit. Mm -hmm. So they say the quality of the individual is determined by the quality of the word. The words you hear, the words you receive, the circles that you're in. And mm -hmm. so the, the quality that you are, bro, in this season came from all of those things. As you were pre-qualifying, and, and I'm saying that because someone is listening today and they're wondering what is next. What is next is allowing the orchestration of God to get you to a place to birth an idea. Birth an idea that's going to help countless people birth an idea that's going to continue. It's almost like um, I look at us, Roy, uh, holistically as, the, as mankind, as puzzle pieces. We're all puzzle pieces. And it's funny how you, I used to do puzzle pieces, puzzles that had 500 pieces, 1,000 pieces. And I would try in this particular corner, I would take the box and put the box that had the picture on it on his face till I couldn't see it. I couldn't see. So I'm trying to connect pieces in the corner and in the middle of the puzzle that wouldn't connect. And so it's amazing to see how God is the perfect orchestrator of every puzzle piece that even when certain things doesn't connect, it still opens you up to something else. And that has to do with knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. And so I look at the wisdom of even what you're saying about not just two, Three. And I think we need to start looking around us because some of our answers in this season of COVID, the season musicians talk to you, uh, or even for pastors, some of the things that you're looking for is based on your knowledge base. What do you know? What can you see in the midst of adversity? What can you see that is going to say, 
oh my gosh, I'm about to take a job here, but God is trying to give me $1,200 here. He's trying to give me a $1,500 here. He's trying to make it an annual income of $150,000 a year. What is God trying to bring you to through the pieces of the puzzle that even sometimes don't fit? And, wow. and don't take the box and turn the box that you need to see and you put it on your face, on his face, the way you can't see what it's supposed to look like. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So some people, I, you know, I just wanted to say, look, look at the blueprint of your life. The blueprint is God. God will show you exactly what he wants to, wants to do. And I believe for my life, Roy, as I'm listening to your story, uh, Antoine, I believe you could say the same thing. God continues to change things. It's like, okay, that's obsolete. Throw that away. Okay, that's going to work for right now. But don't take something that's supposed to only work for three months and try to make it work a whole year. Know when to throw it away. Know when to move on to the next thing. Know what to keep, who to keep, who to let go. And so I'm, those are some things that I was thinking about um, uh, as you was talking. Bro, how did you get into orchestration? Because you've been, man, you've orchestrated for some major, major, major people still. Uh, even your production, I watched them. I watched you conducting the band, the orchestra, and the choir at uh, Pastor Tony Evans Church. What, such remarkable, bro! You man, I just man, whew, bro. So that background that you had from your mom, your mom's family, from your dad, those different things that you've seen, yeah. you could see those things all kind of coming together and meshing mm -hmm. to where the discipline that you have the understanding that you have on how to conduct. And yeah. that's a whole nother revelation. I don't want to get into that, but, but, but go ahead. How did you get into yeah. orchestration, my bro? Well, um, I actually started orchestration in college. Um, so one of my buddies um, was doing a record, actually my first semester getting to Hampton. Mm -hmm. No, second semester. And he did like this real minorish, kind of gothic, uh, James Halls type song. Oh. And you remember, um, what was that James Hall song? Great, is it Great is Our Faith? It was a great, it was like a, it was a big gothic, minorish James Hall song. I need to look that up. Yeah. Anyway, all his songs. The intro on that song, John <laughs> Peters did. So okay. that was kind of my reference to what this song was. So I basically got on my uh, Triton. Come on, Triton. Got my Triton and I played out. I was listening to a um to box uh, B minor mass. Mm. Listen to like his masses. I mean it's crazy. You gotta listen to the whole thing though. Mm. So I was listening to his mass and I so I had that in my brain and I had James Hall in my brain at the same time. So I said, you know, let me just try to work these ideas out. And the guy said he wanted an intro, so I just came up with a straight. This is the thing. The mm -hmm. Lord used him because I had never done anything like it before. He said, hey, man, come up with an intro with strings for this song. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. I went and listened, listened to, to, to Bach over here, James Hall, a couple days later. I laid it out for my guy. He said, man, this is this is crazy. So um, I then took it to my professor, who was my theory professor, my music theory professor, mm -hmm. and brought it to him. Yeah, great is our God. That was it. Great I is remember. our God. I remember that term. Yes. Mm -hmm. So great is our God. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Come on. Yeah, that's what that's exactly what it was. So, so basically, I I brought to my professor. I want him to check it out. His name is Dr. Harvey Stokes, PhD, mm. music composition from Michigan State University in the freaking mm. seventies, early seventies. Wow, it's like the hardest of wow. uh, that particular school, Michigan State Ann Arbor is one of the hardest composition programs in the in the world mm -hmm. to be a black man and graduate in the 70s is almost wow. hard. you have to be the like, smartest musical mind on earth to make wow. that wow. so anyway 
I sat down. I said, hey, man, check this out. I showed him the score. He said, that's not possible. The first chord I wrote, he said, that's not possible. And I said, sure it is. And I explained to him why I basically did uh, E flat, uh, E flat major over D flat. The, mm -hmm. the song was in D flat minor, mm -hmm. or C sharp minor, however you want to say it, right? But I started off with a D flat, big bottom D flat with an E flat on top of it. I started mm -hmm. there over C, Come right? On. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do. So, so when, when she said, he said, that's not possible. And then I said, I said sure it is. And I explained to him, I forgot what that was called in school, the symbols we had for music theory. It was a specific symbol for in part writing that we learned. And I haven't done that stuff literally in 15 years. <laughs> but anyway, I, I talked to him in that language. He said, come here. He took me to his office. He said, read this book, read this book, read this book. Come back and tell me how how, how it is. Because now this is above what we're learning right now. We I'm a freshman taking music theory. We're mm -hmm. not even at that level yet. He was sent. He was giving me books that he learned that he was reading in his master's program. Mm -hmm. I basically came back to him. One of the books uh, was Rimsky Kors Korsakov's book um, Principles of Orchestration. Rimsky Korsakov mm -hmm. last name Rimsky Korsakov. Uh, Nick, Nikolai, his name is Nikolai Rimsky Korsakov. I've heard of him, yeah. And that book, that orchestration book is crazy. Wow. So literally, wow. when you give me that book, I, ne I didn't, I never finished it. I never finished it. <laughs> but I, I dived into it because the thing is, it's not one of the books you can just read. Like, mm -hmm. you, you might be on one page for a month. Just trying wow. to understand the principles he's trying to say and working them out and, sure. and listening because he has listening instructions, and, you know. So anyway, Dr. Stokes kind of became my mentor, uh, or really was my mentor, though I wasn't in school for wow. composition at all. Wow. I was not there for that. So everything I was doing orchestration was extra credit. So finally he said, okay, he said, I have somebody I want you to sit down with. I think you need to study with Adolphus Hellstork. And Adolphus Hellstork went to the same school that Stokes went to. He's a mm. world renowned African composer. You look up Adolphus Hellstork, his compositions are out of this world. Mm. So he was teaching at Old Dominion University and just happened to be that Hampton had this cohort thing with ODU. So I was able to go over there and study with Adolphus Hellstor. And Hellstor oh, red inked all my scores. He thought I was, he thought I sucked. He thought I sucked. He thought oh. I was. But really, like, and when I explained to him that I wasn't a composition major, he said, Well, I see why, but that doesn't mean you need to be a composer now. You're not ready. Oh, I mean, he, he tore me up and I took it. I took it like a man. So mm -hmm. finally one day he said, you know what? You need to just stay. He said, "Just do production, man. Just, just do that. Do that. Don't do this composition thing. Just stop." So I did a composition recital because I was trying to get in Temple University, and I mm -hmm. the year I was working with him, I was studying under him. He, he gave me a few kind of nods, like, hmm, "That's interesting. That's nice." So I did a composition recital to get into Temple University because they wanted recordings of your compositions. Understand, I am not in a composition program. I'm not mm. studying composition. Everything I'm doing, I'm pulling players together, pulling musicians together, writing music for them, even, even pulling some of my professors in to sing and play stuff. This is all extra credit, right? All because mm. I need to record for Temple University to get into their master's program. So Adolphus Hellstork came to my recital. And when it was over, he said, I didn't know you played the piano like that. He was like, all this stuff is going on. He, he said, all this is going on in your little brain. He said, you're going to be all right. I said, I think I just, <laughs> for real? Wow. But guess what? This is funny. 
I got accepted into Temple University. Okay. Well, let's just say it was May. I got accepted. Beginning of June, they send me another letter and say, our apologies, we sent that first letter to you by accident. You have not been accepted in Temple University. Oh, no. Loose here, wait a minute. Loose here. So, you know, man, when I tell you that, that messed me up, man. That messed yeah. me up. Yeah, for sure. So, that's why I went, I went right on back to, to Texas. And, but I kept just pushing and, you know, I would, um, I would arrange, you know, I was actually real cool, still am, with Phil Lassiter. And Phil yeah. Lassiter let me come over to his house because I, I said, well, you know what? I'm going to kind of take what Adolphus told me about music production and just kind of streamline it as it relates to arranging orchestration. I'm going to just do that mm -hmm. stuff in mm -hmm. the production world. Mm -hmm. So Phil, Phil let me come over to his house a few times just to watch him arrange. Like, I was there when he worked on uh, Fred's What's that first record Fred did at Father's House? Uh, Free to Worship. Okay, Free to Worship. I was there when he worked that stuff out. It was it, it was the most amazing experience because I didn't know horns like that. And wow. he, he just showed me articulations. He showed me how he arranged. I wow. mean, he just opened my brain completely up. Wow. wow. So, and what he told me he had done is that he had put together tapes um, and just gave them to people. He would go to people's studio sessions and just give them to hey man, check out, check out these horns I've done. So, you yeah. know, I'm doing the same thing. So I started, mm. I started doing the same thing. The problem was his stuff was dope early on. <laughs> <laughs> My stuff was, it was not sweet. Wow. Because I'm like, I mean, one, for strange, you got to have killing players. And my mm. players have some intonation problems, you know. Mm. Strange, mm. like, it's a whole nother thing. So anyway, I had so, I had a few people who just took so, took a risk out on me and used me. David Frazier was one of those people. Oh, David, yeah. David looked out. Uh, Freddie Washington was one of those people. Yeah. Hey, you let me hear that record, too. It was incredible what yeah. you did. At yeah. Home. yeah, yeah, I remember that. Wow. So I was able to work on, I was able to learn on those records. That was literally on the job training. Because that was my mm. first time getting great examples of good players. Mm. Now, I actually messed up in one of Freddie's sessions. Okay. This is about me and Freddie. Uh, um, we're, we're best friends right now because we made it through that. Wow. He spent a lot of money to do a session, and I got a contractor who did not get me the greatest players. Mm. They came in there, and in the first five minutes, I knew that session was screwed. And we spent a good three grand. We were going, we had we had four songs to do. When they started playing the before the session started, we would just run through the material. I conducted the first bar. I said. Ooh. And don't think of somebody's Russian or Korean or even white, because this is what people think in their minds, because they white, because they Russian, because they Korean, they can play. Well, if they haven't played together before. Mm -hmm. And don't think because they play in a big symphony means they can play. Because actually, symphony players tend to be very lazy, meaning they can Come play. On, bro. Wow. They can, they can play in a group of 40 people playing their instrument with them. But if you take them out, isolate them, if they're not the first chair, see, it's who, the question is, who are you getting from the orchestra? If they're the person on the third row and you pull them into a session by themselves, good luck. Wow. So these, these things I didn't know. I'm thinking because they part of the Dallas Symphony Orchestra, we good, we about to kill it. Mm -hmm. That session, bomb. It completely oh, wow. Freddie was so mad at me. I lost them so much money. So I ended up not being able to use that stuff at all. Oh, no. But I was able to hire another section for very cheap. Mike League over Snarky Pup. Mm -hmm. Helped me pull together some players from uh, Denton, from, from University UT, of North UNT. Yeah. When Mike was there. Because me and Mike worked together at the same church at the time. And Mike mm -hmm. League 
I, I'm, I'm completely indebted to that guy. He got me my horn players and mm. my string players. Mm. Um, horn players for David Frazier's record, because I didn't have any good players on horns either. And by that time, Phil Lasseter had moved. So I couldn't call on him. And he, Phil probably wouldn't play my stuff no way, because it probably wasn't sweet enough for him to play. <laughs> so, so anyway, <laughs> Mike League helped me pull together the players, and um, we, we we were able to recut Freddie's whole record. And they basically revived the stones wow. that Nehemiah refers to. Come on, <laughs> because my career, I thought I, I thought I was dead in the water. Wow. Um, so yeah, that was like my first. Freddie's record was my first big record with strings. David Frazier's record was my first big record with strings and horns. And I used mm-hmm. all UNT people. But then yeah. Mike Lee. So Phil, Phil Lasseter moved to New York. Yes, now, he did. Mm-hmm. Then a, a couple years later, all my players, horn players, were in Snarky Puppet. And they moved to New York. So I had, wow. had to go back to starting over and starting over. Um, of course, when 2009 hit, around the time Snarky uh, moved, uh, you know, the economy was affected really bad by, you know, yeah. the, uh, the housing market crash. So I started doing mm-hmm. virtual orchestration. It's the only reason why I did that, because I wanted to do all live. I ain't doing that virtual stuff. But then mm-hmm. when, that, when that housing market crisis came, I started doing virtual um and then kind of when the market bounced back i'll say around 2012 2013 came back into doing live again uh i was able to work on uh richard smallwood's record now that was when i had a new group of players from unt but they weren't through snarky they were completely new class see the thing is with these big university programs they have what they call the one o'clock the one o'clock is where the best of the best are in the one o'clock. Any jazz program in the country is the one o'clock. If you ain't in the one o'clock, if you're in the 12 o'clock, if you're in the three o'clock, it's the one o'clock. So basically my interview question was, are you in the one o'clock? Yes, you're hired. Because I know if you're in that program and you're in the one o'clock, you have to be able to play just to be able to get in that room and they put their university stamp on your back, you have to be able to play. And so you have to sight read like crazy. Yeah, your sight reading gotta be out of this world. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so basically I um I start I use those guys on Smallwood's record. Um mm-hmm. yes, I'm in a I'm in a, a webinar. Okay. Um I love it. So, so basically I had to start all over, use new players, but, you know, it was really good. You know, I, I always had to kind of use new players for horns until I started working with Leo. Now, now me and Leo, Leo yeah. was able to cut for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have another guy in Tyler, Texas named Micah Bell, who's a really great trumpet player as well. Um, but anyway, you know, like the orchestration, it just kind of, it's one of those things, man, if you're going to do it, you're going to get a lot of bruises because, mm-hmm. especially in the commercial space, because you're basically trying to make budgets work. That's really what the job is. Can this work out? Can I create mm-hmm. the same level of productivity with the budget here that I can with the budget here? And I have to work, for me, I'm working in both spaces all day, every day. I'm working on small budget records today. Tomorrow, I'm working on a big budget record. But I don't want, the thing is, the listener's not going to know the difference from the two. The difference the listener's not going to know is, is this a big budget record or is this a small budget? This is not going to have a clue. And believe it or not, a lot of the big records I'm, I've been working on, or the records you would think, or big budget records because they have a label, or the ones with the small budgets. Sure, true. And, and they and that they <laughs> leverage that. They leverage the fact that it's like, hey, we're on this label. This is the artist. This is whatever. So they they give this, and I don't think there's an actual name for it. So I'm gonna make up a name. It's an opportunity credit. 
It's where like, hey, we're gonna pay you this much, and yeah. then the, after, <laughs> the fact that you're on here is gonna be, you know, no, part of your resume. But, but this is the thing, I don't even care about opportunities. Yeah. I'm about money. Like, I, yeah. I hate to say it, if I'm doing industry, yeah. if this is the music industry, I'm gonna make the same amount. The question is, who else am I hiring? That's the difference from big budget, small budget. So small budget is, most a lot of these labels want to do virtual now. Well, I'm not mm-hmm. hiring players. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm yeah. still getting the same amount. I, I cut my money in there. It's all, my money's always in there. It's like, it's in there like, you make sure you get that. But yeah. then big budget, I'm able to, you know, hire 11 players or four players or six players. You know, it just depends. And really the people who are most passionate about having live instrumentation are the ones. You have to allocate that budget early on. If you don't have those numbers in there before you get started, it ain't going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I make sure, and this is for any, anybody who's uh, doing the opportunity, because I think, yeah, I did do those in the past. Yeah, sure. I did opportunities in the past. But at some point, when you get a family, you got to turn a corner. And you know what? Everybody will get paid from something and you won't because you didn't negotiate. You only get what you negotiate. Come on. That'll 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 preach that'll preach all day. You know, so right there, well, I got so much I want to say, but we gotta get ready to close. Um, in a few more moments, man. What was your experience like? Because I called you to do some work with me on uh Gerard and Javon Woods project. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I can't really say the other stuff I want to say, but what I will say is what I, what I want to ask is what was your, what was your mindset? Because if you never heard, uh, what, what, what song was this? It was a song I had never uh, heard before. Um, yeah, it's the hymn, uh, Fa- The Father's Love. Um, yeah, Great is the Father's how, Love. How, how deep is the Father's Yeah. So what was your thought process on that because I believe you did that virtually because the budget was not big to get players. Yeah. You see, that, what was, was your, that was a Motown record, wasn't it? Yeah, yep, that was for, mm-hmm. that they, was for Motown gospel. They don't be able to allocate money for string like that. No, not at all. I, that was that was my request. I requested and, and I wanted you to, you to do that. that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And Gerard was open. That's one thing about Gerard. He is a Q, that's what you want, well, that's what we're going to do. You know, that was the kind of vibe behind it. What was your thoughts arranging that piece? That you Because it was amazing. I know I was doing some foolishness grammatically. And I said, Roy, do follow me all the way down this dumb, this, not dumb, but this <laughs> chromatic line from the top. <laughs> oh, I love that stuff, man. It I was lo- incredible, I, 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 man. Because I had, the thing is, like, with the virtual thing, and I'm actually thinking about doing like doing a course on the virtuals. That would um, be dope, bro. That would be amazing. But like with the virtuals, you pretty much have to have you hear what libraries you're gonna use based off of what's happening in the in the passage. Mm-hmm. So when you do that chromatic line, I do which library I was and I said, ooh, that's gonna sound great. Ooh, I, I can't wait mm-hmm. to do when I heard it, I was like, I can't wait to work on this. Cause I knew which library I was gonna use. Mm-hmm. Um and it's like your arrangement, the thing I love about people like you, uh, Kenny Shelton, um, some of my favorites, Justin Savage. Yeah, great guys. Man. Uh, great Trent guys. Phillips. Mm-hmm. The thing I love about working with y'all guys, it's really easy to arrange y'all stuff because mm-hmm. y'all are giving me all the information I need. Like, I don't have to come up with, I don't have to be a magician and come up with completely new things. It's all there. All I have to do is just go with it. Wow. I have to trust that you knew what you were doing when you played that. Mm. So in my best interest is just to go with it. So a lot of people think I'm, man, Roy doing some, that's some crazy stuff. Like, this is exactly what he just played. <laughs> you know what but I'm saying? I, I, think, I think what happens though, even with that stuff, when you listen back to it, uh, like when you talk about the library, it goes into you have these people that can arrange very well and you just have to embellish on it. But I think the way you embellish on it still gives that wow factor. Because honestly, 
the end listener doesn't know who came up with what, but right. the way you embellish it like the, the attack of the strings, the the, the releases, yeah, the, how yeah. they paid out. It's like that's, that's the piece. That's yeah. the piece that takes time. That's that's why virtu- it takes me longer to arrange virtually than it does for live. Well, I can only imagine. It takes me more time in the production process for virtual. At that's least so what I'm actually doing. Because I have to work out all those articulations. I got to think, see, what I, what I, though I'm not a string player, I bow all the time. So I play a pass, mm-hmm. I'm like, and mm-hmm. I'm imagining how they will bow. So that's telling me how I'm going to attack the notes in the articulations. Like, if they, like down bow is, is a much more aggressive attack. Up bow is more melodic mm-hmm. and pretty. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, um. So depending on what the passage is, I'm thinking about, you know, even if a if a if a note is holding out real long, there's one library called um uh LA scoring strings that I really use. It's really a great mm-hmm. library. LA scoring strings force you to have to think like a string player. They made me sit there and bow. Because LA does a thing where if you hold a note too long, it'll actually give you the bowing nose noise of them changing direction to hold out a, 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 a long, long note. Mm. And you hear kind of go out of tune. So, so what you got to do with LA, you literally have to play around with the mod wheel and move like y- your mod wheel is pretty much your bow direction. And you mm. have to play around with that thing so it doesn't go out of tune. Mm. You have to be so, because I mean, a real string player has to be so they have to be so focused on that one note that they don't go flat or sharp. So they're mm-hmm. sitting there, if it's holding out a long time, they got to be just as focused and in tune to what's going on. So LA forces the arranger to have to do the same thing with their library. So I got to be just oh. as focused as the string player would. So even when it's just a long note, sometimes a long note is like actually hard using that library. Because I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm using them all where I'm coming back and forth. <laughs> you know, sometimes I might have three different. It'd be one high note just holding, and I have three libraries playing that one note, and they're all moving differently because in real life, no two string players are playing that note exactly mm-hmm. right. So that's why a lot of people think my stuff is real, but it's really that I'm emulating exactly what a string player would do. Mm-hmm. You you know what, man? Um, I'm gonna say this as we, we get ready to to wind down because and we're gonna have to do a part two, Roy, for sure. Because it, you said so many things. One of the things that I like is you said uh, based on the information of a Trent Phillips, Justin Savage, uh, Kenny Shelton, you have all the information that you need. So it you've been given what you need now to orchestrate. And begin to move. So there's something that I think about when I think about what you said there that I believe there's a life principle in that. It is uh, almost like the rules of engagement. Mm-hmm. Every field, every uh, every field, every t- particular thing that you're going to get into, it there is rules that you must follow. But there are some things pertaining to life that you don't have to try to create and make up. If you follow was there you begin yes. to see the, the the very beneficial conclusions that is needed and so yeah. when you said that it's like i want to encourage somebody to be very careful in this season uh, as we're going into we came through covid and people are still experiencing things um we're going through this racial tension going through unrest everywhere the second string of covid is supposedly coming in of yep. these things be very careful of the news that you're receiving, the data, the information, and be very careful of what you're outsourcing because mm-hmm. it's possible that you didn't do enough research on who you got your information from. There are so many lies and so many people that you, it, it's now becoming, Roy, unless you have, you know, like, I love Q-tips. So simple, right? And so Q-tips to get that wax out because sometimes because of the wax buildup, I can't hear. Right. And so it's becoming in 2020, this is June the 23rd, 
It's becoming more and more difficult when your ears are not clear, clean or clear to filter the information. Yes. And so that's the life, you know, that's the principle that I got from what you're saying. Be mm -hmm. careful, my brother, musician, preacher, worker, like, be careful what you're hearing, who you hear it from. You got to make sure that that information has been tested. Never trust uh, a person who has not been tested in that area. And wow. so that's one of the things that I believe, Roy, uh, so you've done, let's see, so that's Richard Frazier, you got introduced to Freddie Washington, Richard Smallwood, what are some of other people, man, where people can find you? Because I, I want people to experience um, your experience and your genius. Um, yeah. what, who are some other people, bro, that you have worked with um, in, in, uh, in the last couple of years? So people can go and see your work, especially if they need your services, bro. We want you to give all your, your sites and everything where people can find you and stuff. Yeah, you can find me on uh, roysnoise.com. Uh, Roy's R O Y Z N O Y Z dot com. Um, you can book me there. Uh, I've worked with you know a lot of artists kind of across gospel, CCM, uh, RB. So I worked with uh, like Jennifer Holiday. Um, I've worked with Joe, RB singer Joe. Um, I've worked with uh, Nicole C. Mullen. Uh, I've worked with Anthony Brown, Tamala Mann, Clark Sisters, uh, the Karen Clark's record in 2013. Um, did this new Kiara Shear and Clark Sisters record that came out this year. Um, Don McKirkland, Kirk Carr. Uh, so, yeah, you know, I've just. I'm, I, so I've been mostly gospel, but then, you know, some sprinkles of R&B and CCM. You, you can do, he can do anything, pretty much, that's what he's saying. And uh, trusted work, uh, a person of integrity. You know, we worked on a couple of different things. My new record, the Javon, Javon record, I referred into some things. Uh, your name even popped up for this uh, special thing that they're trying to put together in October in Virginia. I think you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, because I'm, I'm in the middle. Uh, Virginia Union University. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I, I I made sure that I made a big push to get you because you're, you're the right person that will be able to help us to accomplish what we need to accomplish. Gotcha. So I, I can literally vouch for my brother and as, as well as his uh, resume. Get him to be a part of what you're doing. If you're looking for that, you're looking for these intangible uh, a word that I want to say, and then I want to get your last thoughts and see if Antoine has anything he wants to say as we uh, as we hurry to a close. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> one of the words that I thought about, uh, even when you were uh, dealing with the uh, the doctor, Doctor Stokes, I believe, and how he introduced you and sat you down, took you into the room, gave you the books of the people, and uh, how he was blown away. By what you did, uh, taking the, the Bach arrangement and taking the, the uh, John, uh, James Hall and putting it together. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the word I looked it up is innovative. You tapped into another composition, was not even how a part of what you were there to do, mm -hmm. but it's something that God, from the foundation of the world, concerned of Lord Cotton's life, had on his mind concerning you. Wow. Your need and where he would be taken to you to. And uh, man, and so innovative is a featuring new methods, advanced and original. Uh, it's a person introducing new ideas, original and creative in thinking. Now I say that because I just want to encourage you, my bro, and encourage those who are listening. I'm encouraged as well by this. We have to be careful sometimes because there are some people who have gone ahead of us who have degrees who have been tried, sometimes they're thinking when they meet us, they see the goods, but they don't want to necessarily co-sign on what we've been given because it comes from a different school of thought than what they went through. I had to go through school. And I had to go through this rigorous training. I had to go, and God just put something on us 
because because of who where we are born, who we were born to, like your father, I imagine is a wonderful man of God. Um, I, I don't know if I ever met your dad, Roy, I can't remember. Uh, your mom, but you come from this godly household. You're amongst all of this church, all of this God in these environments. And bro, there's strands in your DNA, bro. There's things that God gave you, bro, that is just going to, well, how long you been doing this? You ain't supposed to be able to do that. You ain't supposed to be able to hear that, you know, but God has already put his stamp of approval on you in spite of people who have already been doing what they were doing. So my brothers and sisters today, be careful of who you're looking sometimes to the approval of what you've been given. Because sometimes you you be cut down and, and placed in a place to where you think you're crazy, but God has actually given, given you something that's innovative. Uh, innovation is on your life. So look into that word, look that up, what that means, and continue to be innovative in the areas and the fields that you do in thinking, thinking ahead, going and beating people to the problems that they have, be the solution, be the answer. So, Ryan, I appreciate you, man, so much, man, for taking mm -hmm. time to come. Um, if there's any last thoughts that you have, Antoine, any questions you have for him? Um, I mean, I'll, I'll state this. I, I, uh, it's very interesting uh, how God works because uh, my kind of summary of today uh, deals with that puzzle piece, of, pu the puzzle that you mentioned earlier. Uh, it, it's crazy because all of us are building a puzzle. Like if we consider our life as a puzzle, uh, the crazy thing is we don't really know how the end picture is supposed to look, but we know that we're putting pieces in place. And the crazy thing is we have to know when what we're doing is not fitting into the bigger picture of the puzzle. So like you said earlier, you, you flip this box over and now you're putting these puzzle pieces in and you're like, okay, this doesn't fit. We literally have to look at our life like this, like, God, I'm here as a vessel. And I know that I'm building this bigger, bigger picture and even this legacy. So once you are dead, wherever your puzzle ended at, it's sometimes not even finished. It's just, hey, somebody has to carry on where I left off through your children, through your network, through all of that type of stuff. So to see, you know, the direction, even Roy, that you went through where it's like, okay, some stuff, when you really think about some stuff just happened. And mm -hmm. it was like, okay, I got this puzzle piece that says, uh, listen to this song. So now I listen to this James Hall song, never realizing that I'm listening to this song because it's going to be a puzzle piece into this because of also, you know, I checked out this Bach thing that somebody just randomly showed me. Now my ears are tuned to this one piece of the puzzle. That then yeah. is placed right there. Now I have a story. And what one of the things I was thinking earlier is that, uh, and I'm not sure if y'all have heard of the phrase present moment awareness. But present mm -hmm. moment awareness is something that some people lack, where present moment awareness is me on this call, but I'm moving my phone on the thing because I'm not here in the moment. I'm just like, okay, I'm here, but Ooh. I'm not really here. So the, your ability to be aware of the moment that God has you in is one of the keys to making sure that you're puzzle pieces fit wow if you're not aware of what's going on you can't fit the puzzles in and then you're like man why isn't this working why isn't this working or and, and it's not the puzzle piece for right now it may not mean that it's not going to be a puzzle piece that's not like sometimes stuff doesn't work and it just doesn't work for now because another piece goes right here not that it's not meant to work but like you like even with Cornell, some of the stuff that he tried to do years ago even uh, in one of the videos that we're sharing, uh, he's like, you know, it took him coming to Dallas to do a certain amount of piano concert. It wasn't the piano concerts weren't in his calling. It's you were trying to put the piano concert puzzle piece in New York when it was meant for Dallas. So you just had to wait for that puzzle piece. So like your, your story is bigger. Like once you listen back, your story is really bigger than you may even realize because your, your puzzle is still growing. And if you were to actually, and this was my vision, I was like, if you were able to write down certain stuff on a piece of paper and chop it up into a puzzle and then have to put the pieces back together, you would see how every little piece of your uh, story is a puzzle piece. And it's like, hey, I don't know where this is going to end. This right. may not, my life may not be a thousand piece, uh, puzzle piece or a thousand piece puzzle. It may be 10,000. 
and I can't give up because I'm not build, build it, I'm not finished building my puzzle. So I just got to do what I have to do. I got to go through the learning. I have to go through the shed summons. I have to go through this because I have yeah. to make these connections so that when people hear my name, they trust my name. And that was just the puzzle piece. Wow. So that's what I got from kind of our discussion wow. today. That's good. Wow. That's good. Um, and I, mean, I appreciate you all. Thoughts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you all, um, you know, allowing me to do this. You know, I, I have great respect for both of you all. Um, you know, Antoine, I've seen you before, prior to college, um, um, or prior to move. Where did you move to Harold Rayford? Wisconsin. Wisconsin, before you went to Wisconsin, you just always been an innovator. So it's just been amazing when you did that. Man, I, I purchased a course you did and didn't even take it. That Facebook <laughs> ads course. Yeah. I, I, I took the first class I watched, I said, he's gotten anointed for this. I'm not going to be able to pull this off. <laughs> Let him do this for me. Because like, yeah. I was just like, Woo! you gotta, but you have a known on your life to just figure out stuff, like, and to and to translate it into being a tangible, marketable product or service. Wow. I mean, even just yeah, just behind you. the music, I mean, you 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 are absolute trailblazers. So I appreciate you, you know, do this, and then Quinell, you know. God's gift to music, period. Yeah, he's, the, he's the modern day David. Nobody gets closer to being David than Cornell Gass. Oh, man. To God be the glory, man. I mean, when, when you're playing, and people can't agree, those of you who have heard this man play, there are moments where you're just like, that's not humanly possible. Exactly. How did he just pull that off? How did his left hand curl his thumb in order to get that fingering? in his left hand, and then to come over and do something up here at the same time, and he's just smiling, looking at me while this is happening. <laughs> this is oh, not possible. Wow. But you know what? I mean, it goes to your personality. It goes to who you are, man. You're always, you're in tune. You might be, like, you're talking about uh, present. Present moment. moment awareness. You might have more present moment awareness than any other human I've ever met. Because you are every moment you go all the way in. In a conversation, you're all the way in. So it's just like when you play, you might be more aware of what's happening right now than anybody else. It's just who you it's just, it's just who you're wired to be. Because to be able to play those things, you have to be so open to everything that you're hearing, that God's telling you, that the that that the moment is saying, that the song is saying, that the people are kind of pushing it and their praise is mixed up with yours not i mean oh man man so all that stuff, God, I love you both you man, all you too, are, are, are yeah. held dear to my heart and i appreciate y'all allowing me to do this yeah oh man thank you and, then, I mean, and the world the world is going to be waiting for this the string strings course that you're going to release oh yes bro you must you got to get that together bro because uh it's definitely something it's definitely something that's needed. Listen, I don't know if you're full like I am. There's so much stuff that I that we that I didn't get to say that as Roy was speaking, even Antoine, I wasn't even able to get into all of it. But I'm full. I'm going to be thinking about these things, writing down some things. And I know that you uh, touched in this uh, particular podcast uh, behind the music with Q and my co-host Antoine added value to your life significance. And uh, we just want to say that we love you and we're praying for you uh, during these times. I am a person of prayer. I do pray and I do take my brothers and my sisters, whether you're on uh, a part of our email group, or I pray for everybody that the will of the Lord be done in their life. So we just want to continue to challenge, change, and charge one life at a time. Love being our, my, uh, our inspiration love being our motivation. So thank you for joining today. Listen, I want you to share this, share this, share this. We have other great podcasts as well. Share them. Uh, it's, 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 it's the, uh, the antidote. It's the, the bomb. It's the healing. It's the encouragement for somebody's life. And that's what we're here to do. Change up the mood, change up the monotony of what you've been hearing. You know, 
quality of the person is determined by the quality of the word. So prayerfully, this these podcasts are continuing to be words that are quality is helping to change the quality of your perception, the quality of your thoughts, your reason, the quality of your imagination to be able to think big, dream big, and believe in yourself uh, and lead you further to the Lord. So thank you for joining today. Share, share, share. Great music. Go look at uh, Roy's uh, website. If you need him for work or know anybody who's doing a project, call him. I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. If you're looking for consulting, you're looking for someone to help to take you to another place, as Antoine has done in my life. Please, Antoine Chambers Consulting, reach out to him. He is absolutely amazing. My brother and my friend for years and uh, teamwork makes the dream work. I love you to you guys today, and I'm praying for you. Roy, thank you again, my brother. Hug everybody for me, man. We're going to be talking very, very soon. You guys have a blessed day. Peace and blessings. And we have to pray now because we didn't pray yet. Okay, so I'm praying. So, okay, so pray out or pray in. I, I don't think we prayed in. So I should pray in and then put it. So we should pray in. out now and just call and it pray a prayer, out. out prayer. Okay, so yeah, one of the things that we're going to do, we want to make sure that every podcast we pray. And so I just want to pray for you today, uh, whatever your needs is. Uh, I am understanding more and more that there's nothing too hard for God. And all things are possible to them that believe. So let's say a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We give you praise for this wonderful opportunity to be able to share on this platform. You knew that this moment and this opportunity was coming. So there are those who are standing in need of a fresh touch from you. Uh, they're standing in need of uh, them looking and searching. You're the answer. You're the solution today. You're all that they need today. So I ask that you would lift, that you would strengthen, that you would heal, that you would cultivate, that you would mold, that you would continue to develop, that you would continue to help us to look in the right places. Thank you for the quality of your word, your word that's forever settled in heaven concerning every individual that has heard this, that will hear this. So continue, Lord God, to make very clear plans and purpose. Help us to continue to refine, to reanalyze, to reassess, and come back to the drawing table. Uh, so that we can uh, be the most productive, produce fruit, and that fruit will remain. So I bless you for my brother Roy today. Thank you for him taking time to share. So thank you for his productivity and continue to grow in you. Thank you for the platforms and the nations and the peoples and the things that he has been called to do. Let him receive your choicest blessings for him and his family. Thank you for Lord God Antoine today. Thank you for the time that he's taken. Continue to bless his business and his family. Oh, God, God, go supersede the things that he has prayed for, the things he's believing you for. God, thank you, Lord God, uh, for covering today. You see what's happening in our world, but you are the answer for the world today. So you're God and you're in control. So we just bless you for your plan and your purpose. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. amen.